Now the last thing I want to show as part of this module is how we can turn this test into code that we can then edit however we like in order to customize how this test will run. So first let's save the test as it stands now and we'll go ahead and rename it to browse add to cart and then we're going to come back to this particular icon here which we saw says generate code. When we click generate code what's going to happen is we're going to create a new C sharp class for our code and we'll just give it the default name here that says it's the same name as our test but with coded on the end. We'll say OK. And now we have some code which you can see it says is auto generated. Now it turns out that you may want to regenerate this code in the future. For instance, if you add anything to the recording or if you want to extract out other parameters. So it's important that you don't do a lot of work inside this code itself. But for this example, we're going to go ahead and just hand edit it and assume that we're never going to need to regenerate it again. So the first thing to notice is that there's a constructor for this, which simply sets up the web server. Then there's an override of a method called getRequestEnumerator, which returns back an IEnumerator of web test result. This is going to allow us to return back an unlimited number of web test results based on each individual request. So if we look at a particular request, you can see here is web request 1 on line 44. And it specifies any properties such as our think time, our reporting name, what the validation level is. We haven't talked about that, but when it's set to high, it'll go ahead and fail our validation if any of these things like think time or uh, response time or things like that are not met. And then with each request, it's going to use yield return in order to pull this request back to the, the actual test runner and let it run this test before continuing on to the next one. So then it cleans up the request by setting it to null and starts over to the next test here. So we're at request two and you'll see it ends with a yield return and setting it to null. This repeats for each test that we've recorded. Now, if we want to modify this and say, you know, I really think that instead of a rock parameter, I want this to be blues. We can specify that here along with anything else we want. So for example, if I want to say that this needs to be a random value, I could replace this hard-coded string with a call to something like get genre. And then we can go ahead and create this method get genre, which is a string and have it return back blues or we could create a new array or list, let's use a list and then we can just say that we have rock blues classical. Now we just need a random number. With the size of our list. And then we'll just return back genres sub index. And now this would allow us to randomize which genres we were clicking on. And then we could come in here and replace any of these requests for parameters for different genres. We can replace now with our get genre method, allowing us to ensure that we're always selecting a random selection of genres. And this might allow us to better represent random user behavior and ensure that we're not constantly hitting the same table or set of rows in our database on a data-driven application. There's a whole lot of other things that you can do once you've got access to this code to modify and customize and dynamicize 
how your web test is going to perform. We'll talk about those in another module, but for now, you've seen how you can easily create a coded test from your web test simply by clicking on generate code. And you can do this as many times as you want, and you can generate different classes with each one. So if you want to dynamically generate them in different ways and modify them in different ways, you can do so very easily.